Jeremiah 33, 6 says, Behold, I will bring it to health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. So we see here an order of things. We shouldn't confuse hope or waiting on the Lord with idleness nor silence, because waiting on the Lord is neither of the two. A waiting season is sometimes there should be more going on in your walk than in times of abundance where you might be sitting back and enjoying your season of harvest. We should always be sowing godly works. Let me just put that out there. But in a season of waiting, this is a great time of preparation. Sometimes in waiting, yes, sometimes there is suffering. You know, I put a word out recently called the abundance in suffering because it's character that's being developed. It's the Lord through you that's really tunneling his way through old pieces of you, chipping away, using the fire to burn away what is no longer profitable within you. A season of waiting is never idle. And when the Lord says, I will bring to health and healing, this is what he's doing. Sometimes we perceive that nothing is happening, but don't forget your God is, as I like to say, omni everything, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. He knows all things. He is all places. He, he is everywhere at once. He is omni everything. He is just all things. Hallelujah. And he's rarely doing one thing at one time in one believer because of this, you know, which is a great thing. You know, so often he's bringing you to health and into healing, not just in your body, but in your mind, in your heart, in every way possible, because he's a, a God of full restoration. You know, he doesn't just fix one thing and say, all right, well, I've done, that's enough. You know what I mean? If you'll allow him, he'll give you the whole shebang. He'll do the whole healing. And of course, this is, it takes the process of our lives. But the truth is, there are certain things that he wants to heal in totality before he releases you into different parts of your life. He's not going to release you into godly marriages when you still have a broken heart. He's not going to release you into purpose when you still have uh, seeds of bitterness within you. You know, he's not going to, if you lack... If you haven't yielded your will to him and your time to him and you lack understanding, he's not going to release you into ministry because this would be unprofitable to his kingdom. You know, we're talking about his glory here. So God is about his business and that's why he calls us to be about his business. He most certainly is. No one's going to change his timelines or his processes. God has no favorites. He doesn't let anything slip by. He doesn't leave anything under the rug. Full restoration, total healing. But so he starts here, right? And oh, just a little note I have here. You are not required to heal yourself or to even make sense of your pain. Sometimes we get stuck in this loop where we're trying to make sense of what's happened. We're trying to make sense, but why of the things we've done, of the things other people have done, of, of exactly what's going on. Why do I feel this way? Or maybe this, or maybe it's from that. And it can bring us farther into confusion. You know, sometimes we think that the enemy is attacking us when sometimes we are attacking ourselves. You know, the human brain is a really incredible thing, but it needs to be submitted to the Lord in order to be most profitable. So my note says, you aren't required to heal yourself or even to make sense of your pain, but you are required to call upon the Lord. It is he who is going to take everything, filter it through himself, and then kind of just like start to give it back to you however he needs to. Not to give your pain back to you, but to teach, you know, to give you the, the fruit from it, the lesson, the revelation, the healing, whatever it is he wants to give you from that specific uh, pain. So there's an order here we hear again in this verse, Jeremiah 33, 6. Behold, I will bring it to health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. He's so good. So there's an order here. First, he's bringing to health and to healing. He's bringing you into health and to healing. And then he's going to reveal to you an abundance of prosperity and security. Now, this is not something that... This is something that's been ordained for you. You know, it's like Christmas morning because it's, he's not going to let you open this stuff until it's time, until the appointed time, until the appointed, you know, level of healing, because he wants you to be able to do well with a little bit. 
before he's going to give you more. And that's, you know, that's a good father. Formerly in your unhealed state, you weren't fit to receive because you would have thrown it away, taken it for granted, not understood it. You know, for what use is gold to a baby? You know, we aren't fit for certain things in every season. And if we would just expect his goodness to know that at some point, the Lord is going to bring, you know, a certain healings to fruition. At some point, if we would just stay 10 toes down, if we would just endure, you know, people spend so much time swinging in the spirit when the Lord is saying, I want you to be still. Haven't you been swinging your whole worldly life? Like, don't you want to stop fighting? You know, many people bring the fight into this walk when the Lord is saying, just be still. Just trust me. Maybe, you know, you could never trust somebody before. You can trust me. Maybe you never had a father. I'm your father. Maybe you don't know what it's like to have a good man in your life, man or woman. You know what I mean? I'm talking to everybody here. Maybe you don't know what it's like to have leadership, security, um, you know, any any of these things that are so important, especially to growing children. Maybe you don't know what that's like. And the Lord is saying, I have all of that for you and more, but you need to grow up in the ways of the Lord. You know, bring your child up in the way of the Lord. We do that for our children because the Lord does that for us. You know, we learn everything good from him. So there's an order here. So formerly we weren't, uh, fit to have these things. You know, we wouldn't give a million dollars to someone doesn't who doesn't know how to manage money. Why? Because it would be squandered. Uh, we wouldn't give a husband or a, the Lord wouldn't give a husband or a wife to someone who's broken and bitter or depressed and anxious. Why? Because more pain is going to come. You know, we can't call it a blessing when sorrow comes with it. And the Lord knows that. So there's no profit available to anyone for God to give much to those who have not for any reason been able to do well with a little so god is a god of multiplication you know in the parable of the talents we have someone who was given one talent and someone who was given several talents talents were like money right they were like coins essentially back in the day and of course when the the master returned he expected everyone to have multiplied their talent and he the one with many talents actually did multiply it he ended up giving his master more see i made four into 20 you know whatever i forget and the mat the servant who one talent was given to he was irresponsible with it not even that he went and spent it but you know the ways of a man seem right to him he went and he hid it he buried it and when his master came back he's like See, I kept your talent safe. What use did the master have for one more talent? He had all the talents. He was the one giving out talents. What he was doing was investing. He was investing, and that's what the Lord does in us. He He invests his Holy Spirit into us. He's a God of multiplication and abundance. He, We are an investment. Don't, don't take this the wrong way. We are his children. He loves us very much. But he also invests himself into us he invests his wisdom and revelation and knowledge that we would multiply that we would go out and make disciples and multiply that way that we would use his um you know to many believers he gives much money and, and they become kingdom financiers as they call them people that are going to bankroll essentially godly pursuits you know to bring many to faith to get bibles to people to feed the homeless you know to do true godly works so there's an order here the lord is saying you know I'm going to heal you inside and out, and then I'm going to introduce you to these concepts. They're always there, even to, you know, if a homeless person off the street tomorrow who grew up poor, and this was their whole life and all they ever knew, you know, my sheep hear me, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep know my voice. If, if that homeless person is the Lord's, and that's one of his sheep, the Lord is going to take him off the street. He's going to bring him to health and healing. And then he too, his heritage is abundance, is, is the revelation of abundance of prosperity and security. This is his heritage. That is your heritage as you belong to the Lord. It's always available. It's not, it's just like his security. You know, a lot of people kind of freak out and they start, you know, early as a more immature believer, I would go around with my um, blood of Jesus stick. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. And, and one day, he, and not there's anything inherently wrong with it, but there's a better way. The Lord is saying, uh, what he says to me, he's like, I am the good shepherd. The sheep don't need to ask the good shepherd 
to protect them. That's just what I do. You stay close to me, you know, stay in our flock, right? I don't know why I did a chicken. Uh, <laughs> you stay in our flock, you know? <laughs> and, um, and the good shepherd protects you. The good shepherd protects you. That's just a given. It's what he does. Expect his goodness. You know, it's not just about blessings. Not everything's just about what the Lord is bringing us. He's saying, I protect you. That's your heritage. That's my job. That's what I do. You're mine. Hallelujah. I believe that's also in Jeremiah. You are mine. That is, that's a verse that changed my life when I read that. I, I, I could do a whole word on that. But when, when he says, you are mine. Uh, yes. A little overly emotional today. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> but yes. Um, so yeah, I just want to finish up there. Um, there's an order here. There's an order to everything God is doing. It's not, you know, if, if the truth is not everyone, and this is a season of harvest. Okay. Yes. Many are in this abundant season of harvest. Keep it real. Many are not. Many are not in this season right now. And that's okay. That means that's what's coming to you. Did you see what the word of God says from the prophet Jeremiah? Ain't nobody off the street. That's the prophet Jeremiah he's specifically speaking. You know, he's, he's the Lord is saying, I'm going to bring to health and healing. And then once I heal them, I'm going to reveal to them the abundance of prosperity and security. This is your heritage. This is what the Lord has for you. This is your portion. It's what he has aside for you. But again, it's just like Christmas morning. You ain't going to open that present until it's time. So as we've been talking about, don't grieve the spirit by, you know, you see other people in different seasons and you want to compare. Don't do that. If other people are on the mountain and you're in the valley, guess what? They were in the valley at one time and you'll be in the mountain at another time. It's so important that we don't grieve the spirit by just freaking out because of the season we're in. Submit where you are. Don't fight God. Don't fight the process. Don't be your own worst enemy. Okay? You need to go through these things so you can be a responsible, matured believer. Nobody's saying it's going to take 500 years. The Lord's ways aren't the ways of this world. Don't worry about We have so many concerns. It's going to take forever. I'm going to miss out on this. No, you're not going to miss out on anything, okay? Your God is the God who made all things. It's nothing for him. It's nothing for him. The desires of your heart. He says he'll give them to you if you do things his way. So keep going.